Okay, so today I'm going to talk about Dick Taylor chocolate out of Eureka, California, United States. So Dick Taylor was started by two guys out of California, Adam Dick and Dustin Taylor. It was actually started in 2010. Um, these guys have been friends and working together for a really long time. They were trained, finished carpenters. They started out, to, they've been working together for 12, 13 years. They started out digging ditches and then framing houses. And then they learned more about carpentry and got trained in carpentry. And then they um, met people along the way who taught them the value of craftsmanship and carpentry and the value of using hand tools and doing things by hand and quality that can come out of that kind of work. So they have a background in carpentry and hand making things. They were making furniture when they found out about chocolate making. They were Finnish carpenters who were making furniture and restoring old boats. Um, so in 2010, they saw a video of, of chocolate making by the Mast Brothers. Um, I wish it wasn't the Mast Brothers. <laughs> I wish they were inspired by someone else. You can Google Mass Brothers and find out all about that. But that's what it was. They were they saw a video by the Mass Brothers about chocolate making and saw the similarities for them in the craftsmanship that goes into making the process of making chocolate. They really had no idea, as most chocolate makers do, how chocolate was made before they saw something that sparked this interest. And so they this interest was sparked and it started as a hobby. So they bought some small batch um, equipment to make chocolate. They set it up in Adam's laundry room. They needed to get some beans. They <laughs> didn't know about where to purchase beans, anything about the beans. They kind of stumbled upon Bertel Ukeson's, uh Madagascar estate beans. They're very famous, very high quality beans. Uh, and that was what they made their first bars out of. It was a lucky stumble. It's a great thing to make your first bar out of. Uh, they then came across um, John Nancy at Chocolate Alchemy and they just learned the process along the way. So their plan at the time was to be full-time carpenters, part-time chocolate makers. They wanted to sell their chocolate at like farmers markets and the area where they live, Humboldt County, is very into um, local made, handmade, things being local. And so having a locally made chocolate, they thought this would do well at the farmer's market. But California has a rule that if you're going to sell food, you have to have a commercial kitchen. So um, funny thing, the lumberyard had a cafe that had not been used for four years. And so it had a kitchen. Now they had a commercial kitchen to make their chocolate and they started selling their chocolate. So that was in November 2010. They were full-time carpenters, part-time chocolate makers. By the time they got into 2012, things had changed. They had gone to, um, in 2012, they became full-time chocolate makers. They had visited the Northwest Chocolate Festival, which is this fantastic community of people who make chocolate and love craft chocolate. They visited um, Theo Chocolate in Seattle and that's a mid-sized chocolate maker and they saw the machinery and these guys seem to be fascinated with the machinery they saw the machinery and the process that went into chocolate making and they started to see the chocolate flag factory like kind of like a wood shop that basically process machinery is process machinery no what no matter what you're doing and so they started scouring the internet. This is what they used to do to get machines for their wood shop. They would get on eBay and Craigslist and find vintage machines that they could refurbish. And they started doing the same with that for their chocolate making. Um, they basically have said that they're trying to duplicate the industrial chocolate making process, but because it's a process, it's a machine process, but they want to have better quality 
going better quality ingredients going in so high quality beans and craftsmanship going into each step of processing the beans so that is how they got into chocolate making so these guys craftsmanship is a word that you will often hear them say and use and associate with themselves as chocolate makers so they not only wanted craftsmanship to go into the chocolate itself but they wanted a whole brand to be based on art driven that they are attention there's attention to detail they're being paid attention to detail and that craftsmanship is important that the package is just as important as what goes into the chocolate but it's not style over substance with them it's great chocolate and great packaging all at once so when they were starting out um, like I mentioned they were inspired by the Mass Brothers and the Mass Brothers were known for their pa packaging their nicely wrapped packages and that's how they started out with wrapping their bars in beautiful paper and they got criticized for that early on and three months into making their making selling chocolate experience they did a total image shift because they did not want to become the mass brothers of the west coast good choice fellas <laughs> all right so um, you'll notice on their packages that they've got boats not something that normally uh, goes with chocolate but now it's synonymous with Dick Taylor chocolate um, Dustin Taylor's brother is, uh, Garrett Taylor is a graphic designer and he also works as a sketch artist at Pixar so they asked him them to he, they asked him to work up some ideas for them and they came up with the boats because it's one of their passions and it also brings them back to this craftsmanship idea that there's uh, art and detail that goes into manufacturing this so it was their similarity if you've also hold held a package um, you know that it's letter pressed uh, they um, wanted to have the quality in the package as well so they went about finding the same thing they did to find equipment for their wood shop they did it for finding equipment for their chocolate shop so they got on ebay found this printing shop that was closing in i think it was oakland and went down there and grabbed their equipment and hauled it back to eureka refurbished it taught themselves how to do letter pressing um, and basically the package is meant to convey to you the quality of what is inside so they set up a print shop basically in Dustin Taylor's parents garage so the packages are really beautiful they have changed um, in recent years so they used to be a paper wrapper um, now they're an envelope so when you pick this up it really feels like a quality product it feels like you should be paying eight ten twelve dollars however much you're being charged for these bars so there's the you you feel that craftsmanship going into both their chocolate and into the packaging itself so i have been thinking about all morning which one of their bars to open <laughs> i have their bee pollen and fennel bar i have their northerner blend bar um, I have their black fig inclusion, brown butter and sea salt, and their limited, re li limited release Jamaica Bachelors Hall single origin bar. Um, the fun thing, well, when I flip the camera around, I'll show you a few more things about their packages. So let's do that. Flip the camera around and open one of the bars. All right, let's take a look at the packaging on their bars. So here's some interesting things about their packaging let's take a look at this so this symbol which is part of their packaging is a modified sail so that's again with the nautical theme you have clearly that it's craft chocolate um, you always have the location on the outside um, interesting thing there is a minimum, hmm, I can think of one that, where there's a sailor, mustachioed sailor guy. 
there's always seems to be two guys at least <laughs> in their uh, boat themed covers. Um, I like to think that it's Adam Dick and Dustin Taylor, but I could be wrong. And then you have their inclusion bars where there's more guys on the boat. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm making that up, but that's just something that I observed. So you've got, they've recently, they've not recently, but they've changed their packaging so that um, they now, they're now using an envelope. The advantage of that is that it protects the chocolate inside a little bit more, gives it a little more heft and makes it feel like it's more a top quality product. I still, have, I think I'm going to open this one. Oh, this is such a hard decision. Okay. I think I'm going to open this one because it's a seasonal release, bee pollen and fennel, and it's not a common, um, not a common inclusion that you normally find. So you've got the boat motif on the front. Uh, let's see what else. This is a seasonal release, 70% dark. On the back, they want the information to be clearly conveyed to you what is in the chocolate and what it's all about. So you've got right away, here's the inclusions, bee pollen and fennel, 70% Brazilian uh, cacao, dark chocolate. It's a seasonal release, so you can only get it at certain times of the year. Uh, let's see, I'll move this closer so you guys can read it. So then we've got the ingredients here. Uh, cacao, Brazilian cacao, cane sugar, cocoa butter, bee pollen, and fennel. So they are organic, not certified though. They are direct trade, although they don't have direct trade <laughs> certification, but they do all these things and they have a lot of transparency. If you go on their website, you can see those things. Um, you have handcrafted in Eureka, California, a best before date. Okay. So they've also changed, so it used to be that their bars were um, wrapped in like foil and also the outside was letterpress paper. So now they have changed the outside to an envelope, but they have also recently changed the inside as well into a wrapper, um, from a wrapper to this envelope. Um, the reason for this is that it keeps the chocolate airtight so that the chocolate doesn't absorb odors of things around it, which is chocolate is well known to do. And also, when you open the wrapper, you get this aroma that's been sealed in that comes out as soon as you open it. Look how beautiful this bar is. So this all comes back. Oh shoot, those are just little pieces of bee pollen in there. So this comes back to their craftsmanship. What a beautiful, intricate mold that this is. You've got their modified sail in the center. And it's, it's, oh, I wish, I hope that's coming through on camera how intricate that mold is. Um, it's not usual with your little squares of chocolate that breaks up evenly, but it is a very unique um, mold and easily identifiable as a Dick Taylor chocolate. And then we can flip it over and look at those inclusions. You can see the fennel seeds and the bee pollen, nice evenly spread. The chocolate has a beautiful shine to it. Um, really good aroma coming off of it right now. Uh, looks well tempered, nice shine. Let's break a piece off and listen to the snap. Good snap. Let's do it again. Yeah, it's got a nice snap. It's not super strong. It's got a little bit of added cocoa butter and that's okay. Um, but it has a nice snap. It looks well tempered. All right, let's warm the chocolate up a little bit to get some of the aromas and then we'll taste it to see what we taste. All right, so interesting. I get, when I smell this, I warm it up a little bit with my thumb to melt the cocoa butter a little because cocoa butter has this close to the same melting temperature as your body temperature. And I can smell that Brazilian cacao. I can smell Underlying notes of chocolate, fudginess, you get the floral notes, but because of that fennel, 
that you can you can also smell the fennel the licorice licorice scent of the fennel okay so when i taste this bar you can taste the brazilian cacao it's nice it's nice cacao it has a, a citrusy kind of flavor to it that works nice with the fennel you get the licorice from the fennel and the bee pollen i was trying to pick one off and taste it separately i don't know what it's just they're like chewy little buds that just are a little bit sweet so they just add a little bit of sweetness there but it's a really nice combination between the floral citrusy brazilian cacao and the fennel so the cacao for this bar is actually interesting as well because it comes from a Brazilian farm that's been around since um, in the Bahia region of Brazil since like the 1940s. And it was almost wiped out in the 80s and 90s when Witch's Broom um, devastated the Brazilian cacao industry. It's a fungus that uh, basically kills the pods, spreads very quickly and easily. Um, but this farm managed to pull through and save some of their cacao and they're now producing again and it's really lovely cacao that they're producing. So let's finish up, flip the camera around and I'll just tell you a few more things about Dick Taylor chocolate. All right, so that was the Dick Taylor bee pollen and fennel bar. I quite enjoyed it. Um, they have a lot of fun inclusions and these guys are always tinkering to make things better. They moved into a new factory in 2015 and um, when they were asked on what they're working on in the future, they said they were working on a um, limited set of limited edition bars from exotic small lot locations and that they were um, working on expanding into Europe as well. If you're interested, since the whole coronavirus quarantine thing is going on right now, um, they are also doing a lot of lives on Instagram. They're quite active on Instagram right now if you're interested in following them. So they are um, chocolate makers out of California that are dedicated to the craftsmanship uh, and the art of both packaging and making chocolate. So I hope you get a chance to try them sometime. And that is this week's chocolate maker. Um, next week, we'll try a new chocolate maker, and I hope you'll join me then. If you'd like to get notified, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Thanks.